So to talk about sound specifically, all materials transmit, absorb, and reflect sound. Okay, so all materials transmit sound, which means the sound goes through it. So think of it as two spaces. There's a, a room over here and a room over here, and this is the wall in between. So over here, there's a loud party going on. There is going to be some noise that transmits through the wall, and then some noise that is absorbed into the wall, and then some noise that is reflective. So the, this is all a function of the material's mass. So essentially what's it, what it's made out of and how thick it is. Although I will say that just the thickness is not the most important part of uh, sound. It's really the materials that are made up of the mass. The surface smoothness. So if it is a super, super smooth surface, um, a lot of that sound is just going to bounce right back into the room rather than absorb or transmit into the other space. If it's really porous, then the um, sound can go into it a little bit more and either be absorbed or transmit. The fiber orientation. So say you have a fibrous material that is on the outside, say it's like a wall paneling and you have all the materials going in one direction, some, materi some sound will still be able to be transmitted and absorbed. If you have the fibers going in an orientation that is angled or, or um, crisscrossed, then there's less area for the sound to pass through. So porosity, I talked a little bit about that in the smoothness. So if it's more porous, more sound can go through it and absorb it or be, excuse me, absorbed. Air tightness. So air transmits sound very well. So if it's really airtight, um, sound can't pass through as easily. And then stiffness. Stiffness would be, again, like a wall, a wall um, assembly. And depending on how stiff it is, then that will also determine how much sound is being reflected or transmitted. So smooth, massive surfaces reflect sound and porous, thick surfaces absorb sound. So I kind of, you know, I just talked about that essentially that, you know, if it's porous, there's more space for the sound to go into and kind of get captured. If it's, if it's smooth and it's massive, the sound will just bounce right off of it and go back into the other space. So one of the primary objectives of architectural acoustics is to reduce the transmission of sound from one space to another. So transmission of sound is primarily reduced by the mass and the stiffness. So again, this would be, this would be the, like the mass of the uh, wall. So, so here is an example of the, the wall in between the spaces and the stiffness. So this is a little bit more like what the architect would account for in their wall assembly. So how their wall is built up, like what materials they're using, if they're using wood and insulation and whatnot. But as interior architects, it's important to know this for when you're building interior partition walls. So say this isn't a structural wall, but you're wanting to divide a wall between a conference room and a break room for like a office. You wanna make sure that you are reducing the transmission of sound. So when people are on break in here and then someone's in the conference room here, that um, it's a comfortable sound quality without it being very disruptive. So given if you have two barriers, so if you have two walls that are the exact same weight, Per area, so um, you know the, sa the same mass, the same weight. The one that is less stiff will perform better than the other, and this is due to the sound bouncing again. If it's less stiff, there's uh, more spaces for the sound to kind of get trapped, essentially. <laughs> 